Uh, we got the engine out. It all looks good. Uh, we don't see any damage on it, which is always the nice thing. That's probably the worst thing that could get damaged. Not only in a crash, you would actually send the engine back to King Tech. But you're going to see on a video how this airplane actually crashed. And we don't believe there's any damage to the King Tech at all. It was a hard landing for sure, but it wasn't a crash. Yeah. But it looks good. And this is actually the first time I've actually held one of these in my hand. And it's just... The amount of technology that is in this little thing is just stupid. It's amazing. It is amazing. It's and amazing. it's they're lighter than I thought they'd be. Yeah. I thought it would have like some more mass on it, but yeah. they made this thing really light. Yeah, and that's the King Tech 102. Yep. Um, so it's heavier than, believe it or not, it's heavier than the 85s and 85s. the 45s. But, yep. uh, but overall, it's a fairly light engine Just for how much thrust it puts out. How much thrust that this thing produced and like how I could throw this. It's lighter than a football. Certain. Yeah. ready to spray the inside of the Ranger with a textured paint to uh, protect the inside from getting contaminants and uh, diesel fuel of course soaking into the wood. So all the exposed balsa we're going to spray with the paint. And uh, Nick brought up a good point. We're not sure if we should maybe just spray the whole inside to be just one color. Um, we're not sure if that's just being lazy. I don't know how it will look. I don't know. Chris didn't paint the whole inside, so we're thinking we're just going to do stupid wood. Yeah, he didn't paint the whole inside either, and I liked that look. Um, so I think the the main problem here is just making sure that this balsa wood is protected. Yeah. Because um, it does get wet. Fuel does leak occasionally here and there, and um, that will degrade the wood over time. So we're just going to protect the best we can. Yep. Also, things that we got done last night is tail section is basically done. We glued up all the hinges. We've got servos installed. Uh, still need to do final installation. We just need to lock tight some things, but we're just kind of just going. Everything on the other airplane is all completely out. And we also did do a mock-up on where we wanted to put everything on the inside here. So you'll see that later when we actually install our stuff. But so far the build's going fairly quick. Whoop. Whoops. <laughs> What'd you do? I was stuck to the plastic <laughs> the fan blew it around the stool but we also are going to be doing a few extra things to the trailer we're actually going to be throwing in some supports on the shelf system because we figured out we saw that it's kind of bouncing a little bit while it's uh in transit we're also going to be doing some better leds on the bottom we have those but that's all for later but we're kind of putting a lot of our time into getting this jet dad is ambitious as hell and wants to try to maiden this thing on saturday I'll maiden it on Saturday. We'll maiden it on Saturday? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not going to guarantee it. But. Today is Wednesday, and we started this thing yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. So, but it's possible because a lot of the wiring and everything is already cut and done. A lot of the plumbing is already done. So, from the other plane, because none of it got damaged on the other airplane. So, a lot of that thought process is already complete. So, really, it's just building the airplane, which doesn't take that long. We still need to do the wings and wire those up, uh, install gear and stuff like that. But we needed to get this step out of the way before we can start putting stuff in. So let's get to it.
So as you saw, the tail is complete. Got the phallic glued in. The thrust tube is installed. Dad also went ahead and got the turbine installed. Uh, still probably going to take it out one more time just to re-glue everything and also uh, re-loctite everything that we need to. But I already CA'd the holes. Oh, you already CA'd the holes? Yeah, we'll have to take it out. <laughs> so, he, Dad also has been, we're going to show you guys, but he also got a 3D printer. We're going to be doing a video showing on 3D printing soon, but we're going to do a new battery system for the airplane so that when we get to the field, we also can just easily pull all the batteries straight out of the fuselage, making it really easy. We also are going to be putting plugs in, plugs right at the top here, so they're labeled, so it's going to be very cleared for the ECU and the two receiver batteries to be plugged in. So it's going to be very plain Jane, um, convenient, and just nice to utilize at the field. Yeah, you never want to charge the batteries in the airplane. Um, LiPo technology and even LiFi technology can explode it's rare but it can explode so you don't want it in your thousands of dollar model so i like to take them out which we recommend for everybody um, sometimes it's very difficult to get the batteries in a very specific spot for cg and working the airplane so we're trying to find a solution now that we have a 3d printer to make this solution even possible before we would have to maybe make a wooden box and everything like that it wouldn't look good uh, so now this looks really good and it's going to be very practical to use, being able to take the batteries outside the airplane and not try to charge them inside just for that fluke of a fire. Because if you get a fire in this airplane, everything's gone. So we're going to try not to let that happen. But things that we're going to try to work on right now, um, we're going to just be doing some wiring. We're going to figure out the length of the wire to make up these plugs for those little holders for the e uh, EC3 plugs that we saw. And uh, just still cleaning up airplanes not that far off uh probably the most time consuming thing that we have left is the wings still have not done the wings yeah that's gonna be that's gonna be a minute that's so minute. um and that's probably why they're still sitting in a box over there because dad doesn't want to touch them and i haven't been home <laughs> uh, i'll end up having to do them but i uh, just uh they can be done last they're not they're not something that needs to be done first this is this is the important stuff and the wings are kind of secondary yeah as in an airplane the wings are secondary yeah, who needs lift? <laughs> so we're gonna get to work on doing some electrical stuff and we'll do it. So dad's going to be working on uh, the wing plugs um, and also cleaning up the wiring. We have the new 3D printed plugs that we, a uh, little mouse That's to hold the I've plugs. That's working on while you were gone. He's been, he's been playing a lot with the 3D printing stuff. So he's been going absolutely ham on that. We have a lot of cool things to show you with the 3D printer on future videos. Once we uh, really understand it and get it all together and learn a lot that we actually can show you. We're still very newbies to it, but so far it's been very cool. Uh, the things that we've been able to make with this uh, with this printer, like just these plugs, for example. I mean, these are really freaking cool. So these are the wing plugs that Dad, if you would focus, makes it look factory. Look factory. So all this is going to be behind the airplane in the fuselage, and the only part you're going to see is the circle. And we have the wing plug, and then we also have the brake plug that's down here, so it holds it all nice. So we have those on both sides. We do have one installed. One installed, so that's kind of what it looks like. You'll see a close up on that. It's pretty far away for you, yeah. uh, but that's what they're, it's gonna look a lot better than the original because we have the ability with the 3D printer now and be able to print a lot of cool things uh, so far. So let's get to work.
So Nick, should we copy lighter side of RC, Jonathan Voigt, and use our trusty bent screwdriver? I actually haven't watched any of his videos. Oh my God, he's great. I you know. haven't seen him? Well, I'm not a big jet guy. Uh, he's good. Jonathan, we love you, buddy. <laughs> well, I do. Nick hasn't seen your videos yet. I've watched a, I watched I knew the name. I watched a little bit, but I haven't watched all the way through, so I don't know the little his nuances. Yeah, well, he builds a lot of aircraft, mostly jets. Okay. Very experienced guy. But uh, anyways, um, no, we're not going to copy you, Jonathan. Um, but uh, we're almost done, as we said, about 80% or so. So yeah. less things that we need to lift, need to do, um, just servos on wings um, we need to a lot of the wiring is basically done it's just plugging things back in finishing up the plugs do the phallics figuring out where it plugs in yeah because you didn't do a lot of marking no, i didn't do a lot of marking but so, i planned on redoing a lot of that anyway so I my would have to just reprogram i told dad to like make all my life a little bit easier is like when he was taking the unplugging everything is write everything down and he wrote all of like th I did. three things four five six and we have like 12, 14 channels in this thing. I know. We're going to have to reprogram. <laughs> we did all that work to set it all up and everything plugged in already. And we have to redo it. I know. But so. the, on, the, on the brighter side of that, we know how everything is supposed to go now because the original jet we did not build. Yeah. So it was difficult tracking down problems when you don't build the aircraft because you don't know what channels plugged into, how it's actually communicating to the receiver, right? Yep. So reprogramming everything, putting it back is not going to be a bad deal because we have a lot of experience now with the uh, Aura. Yep. Yeah. I'll so we can that figure lot. out how to make the Aura talk to everything. Um, so yeah, overall, it is it is going slow, but mainly because it's our first jet that we've built and yep. uh, there's more things that we have to learn as yep. well as, as uh, we're trying to perfect a couple of things that we wish we had a little differently. Um, we have a pitot-static system in this aircraft now, which is going to be kind of cool. That's going to be really cool. Uh, so a lot of things going on, a lot of, a lot of uh, progress, but uh, not flying it tomorrow. We will be out at the field tomorrow, we'll do some recording out there. Probably. Um, but this thing's not going to be flying probably for at least a week. Hopefully we get it done for next week's fun fly, which, which we're fun going, do we, is we're going to South Carolina, Myrtle Beach. Oh, we are going to that one. We're going to Myrtle okay. Beach, yep. Um, we're going to take some great videos there too. It's supposed to be a great time. So. Yep. Um, hopefully this is almost done for the jet build video and uh, we have maybe one more or so and we'll be able to wrap this up yep and then do our maiden cool yep all right everyone well thank you for watching from hobby extreme remember it's not just a hobby it's a passion it's a passion see you Next guys time